Glory to Jesus Christ. My name is Father Andrew Summerson, and on behalf of Bishop Milan, on behalf of all the priests of the Eparchy of Parma, I want to invite you today on a little catechesis on the Beatitudes as we understand and interpret them in the Byzantine tradition. In this year in which Pope Francis has exhorted the entire church to walk together on the same road, sin odos, we in the Eparchy of Parma under the guidance of Bishop Milan, have been asked to collect all of our energies, all our activities, all of our prayers around the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are the very heart of Jesus' teaching. We find it right smack in the center of the Sermon on the Mount, where he summarizes it all for us in Matthew 5, and reiterated again in Luke 6. Allow me to read Matthew's version for you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Now, these words I just read to you, if you're paying attention at the Sunday Divine Liturgy, you're not likely going to hear them proclaimed by the priest or the deacon at the time of the gospel. Because the regular Sunday cycle of lectionary readings doesn't include this very essential text. In fact, we'd have to go to special feast days, like the Feast of St. Nicholas of Myra. We'll have Luke's version of it. Or we'll have to go during the week, right at the beginning of the church year, where Matthew's version gets read, passed over, in a simple daily liturgy. Now, we can consider this as tragic that we don't hear such an essential teaching. But Scripture being read to us by the priest, the deacon, or the chanter, there's only one way to receive sacred scripture. It's not the only way, and it might not even be the best way. Now, in the Byzantine tradition, especially in our Ruthenian church, we have the glorious tradition of congregational singing, which invites every worshiper to put in their very mouth the proclamation of the word of God. Because the divine liturgy is nothing more and nothing less than a patchwork of of sacred scripture woven together in one continuous hymn of praise that God gives us to give back to him. And with that, we give all our joys, all our sorrows, all our dreams, desires, problems, anxieties. The very words of the liturgy give voice, God's voice, back to him. And we get the privilege to sing it. The cool part about that is our hymns are kind of catchy and they have a way of sticking around in your ear and they have a way of melting down into the very marrow of your bones, the very fiber of our being so that we ourselves can be transformed into a word of God. When we sing the divine liturgy, we do what St. Paul tells, exhort each other in psalms, songs, and spiritual hymns. We're encouraging each other on this walk together. And when we look at the Beatitudes in the liturgy, we have a great option before us to be able to sing it. The liturgy gives us that option. For you see, in what's known as the Office of Antiphons, the part that comes after the Litany of Peace, we, in the Byzantine tradition, will sing Psalm 66, 91, 92, 95. These are all psalms that have their origin on the Sunday of Pascha, because every celebration of the Divine Liturgy, especially on Sunday, is a little Pascha, a little resurrection. And so there's good reason for why we sing those psalms. However, we can also sing what are known as the typical psalms, Psalm 102, Psalm 145, in the place of the first and second antiphon. And in the place of the third antiphon, we can sing the Beatitudes. The reason we call them the typical Psalms is because they form a unit, Psalm 102, 145, and the Beatitudes in 
the office of the Tipica, which forms part of the Byzantine divine office, and that portion gets sung every day of the church year. So, in this next series of videos, I'm going to offer an opportunity to learn a little bit in the form of a clinic how to sing these melodies for the typical psalms and the Beatitudes as it's found in this green book. Uh, Bishop Milan has asked, in a very low-entry, easy-to-do way, for all our congregations to exchange our normal setting of antiphons with the typical psalms and the Beatitudes. So we want to give you a way to make sure you're equipped to do that. And in so doing, we're going to proclaim to each other, learn how to sing the fulfillment of the promise that God made to Abraham. He was promised to be blessed. The blessing of land is not in this earth, but it's that reward that's great in heaven. The Beatitudes put, put skin on the bones of what that blessing meant for Abraham, fulfilled in the church for you and me, looks like. And I'll tell you, it looks like just what the liturgy says it is. We say, blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is at hand in the divine liturgy. And so we can prepare with that heavenly vision when the liturgy meets earth through the singing of the Beatitudes to get a glimpse of what blessed life is life so that when we come to God face to face, we who are pure of heart, having been purified by the liturgy, the entire Christian life can see him and smile. Glory to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh.